about a year ago, uh, my wife and I decided we were going to go down to just driving one car. We found that we really didn't need need the, the second vehicle that much. So it has meant that um, I definitely do more bike commuting than in the past and uh, do what we can to cooperate and, and make it work with one vehicle. Now. Good thing is, I, I like to I like to ride. I, I enjoy it very much, and um, also like to do some recreational riding. One one year, uh, my wife gave me this this thing called uh, a multi tool, and it's what a lot of bike riders have in their little tool kit that they take along. You know, if you're if you're going to go far from home. It's not always convenient to uh, to have to phone home and say, "Pick me up, my bike broke, or I got a flat tire, or something like that." So you want to have a little bit of equipment with you. And with a multi-tool, you could almost uh, disassemble a bicycle on the side of the road and put it back together. It has many different functions, uh, many different uh, uses and something that you kind of probably don't want to leave home without if you're going to do if you're going to do a lot of bike riding so that's a that's a multi-tool over the last few weeks we have been talking about a, a series that we've entitled god is and we have been discovering uh, many of the different uh, ways that god reveals himself and many different ways that God acts, uh, multiple ways. And God shows himself to be effective in working in our lives in so many different multiple ways. And so, you know, we have, we have talked about um, the, the various names associated with Jehovah. So, uh, we have talked about God, our, our, our banner, or our victory. Uh, we have talked about God, our healer, Jehovah, the healer. We have talked about uh, the fact that he is the God of peace, uh, Jehovah Shalom. And today I want to talk about how he is uh, our shepherd and the term in uh, that that describes that as Jehovah Raha. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. So it's one of the many ways that God reveals Himself to us and uh, and works in our lives. I think the the scripture verse that probably best describes this is. A very familiar one to most people. Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. So I want to spend some time in, in our teaching time today talking about how the Lord is our shepherd. And I want to leave a few, a few points that maybe you can hang on to and remember as, as you think back on, on today's lesson. And, and the first one is this, that it takes humility to call yourself a sheep. And so Psalm 23 is uh, accredited to have been written by, by King David. And David, as you know, was a very great king. He was a conqueror. He was a mighty warrior. He had taken on many uh, uh, enemies and defeated them. One of the, the most notable victories that David had was against Goliath, that incredible story of young David going up against Goliath and, and uh, completely defeating him. He gave a testimony of, of having killed wild animals while he was himself a shepherd. And in, in the context of, of what David is, is now writing, uh, some commentators 
uh, attribute the time that Psalm 23 was written uh, with being the time that David's army was in conflict with Absalom and his fighting men, Absalom being David's son, who was trying to overthrow his own dad, the king. He was, so he was leading a, a rebellion, a coup against him. And so in the midst of this, here is David, the, the mighty warrior, this great king who says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, David had no uh, delusions about who sheep were and the role of a shepherd. He had been a shepherd. He was a shepherd boy. And so he knew that sheep were basically defenseless, uh, extremely vulnerable to predators, uh, wolves, uh, lions, bears, extremely uh, vulnerable to those kind of attacks. No, no line of attack uh, or self-defense really, just stand there and bleat, I guess. They also are not known for being extremely intelligent and uh, it might not be uncommon for a sheep to, you know, uh, get caught in a thicket, fall off a cliff, wander off and get lost. And so a shepherd had a, a pretty substantial role to play in the lives of his, his flock of sheep to make sure that they were provided for, that they found the food that they needed, and that they were kept together, and that they were provided for. Which kind of brings me to the second thought here, and that is if David was humble enough to say the Lord is my shepherd and to, to kind of put himself in this category of, of the Lord is my shepherd and so I am a sheep of his pasture. That's a, a humble admission. But how do you be a sheep? And that's the second thing I want to talk about. How do you be a sheep? Anybody can read Psalm 23. Anybody can quote it. I think it is probably... Uh, the passage of scripture that is said more times at more funerals than probably any other passage of scripture in the Bible. It's just so familiar to people. When I do funerals, it is the number one requested passage of scripture, Psalm 23. People take great comfort in these words. And so anybody can quote Psalm 23. Anybody can say, the Lord is my shepherd. But there are certain choices and characteristics that we must uh, recognize what it is in order to, to be one of the Lord's sheep. To be able to really say the Lord is my shepherd really does mean something significant. The first thought that comes to my mind when you are a sheep is that you are property. You are property of, of whoever it is that owns the sheep, or maybe you're property of that particular shepherd, but you're owned, you're property, or you are not your own. Uh, a wolf wandering around the wilderness looking for sheep to prey upon is nobody's property. He's, he or she is a free agent. They come and go as they please. They do what they want. They eat what they want. Uh, they're wild animals. And sheep are not in that category. They are the property of the owner. And so when, when David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd, he is really saying, I am under the ownership of the Lord God. I belong to him. So that's one of the characteristics of, of how to be a sheep, and that is to know that you belong to the Lord. In John chapter 10, verse 11, and then following up in verse 15, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so 
Jesus is making this claim about himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And then he goes on to say, I lay my life down for my sheep. And so Jesus is really making a couple of really strong statements here. First of all, he is the good shepherd. He is the best shepherd. And he recognizes that a shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. So in other words, um, if a sheep comes under attack, a wolf comes in amongst the flock, a bear, a lion, the shepherd puts himself between the attacker and the sheep. And he will literally put himself on the line. He will lay his life down in order to protect his flock. He doesn't run away. He lays his life down. And, and what Jesus is saying is, I laid my life down for you. I died for you. I died for your sin. I gave myself up for you so that you can be forgiven. He said, I lay my life down for my sheep. Now, when you look at Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 9 and 10, it's a fairly familiar passage of scripture. But this is what, what Paul is writing. He says, if you confess with your mouth and that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And so when we confess that Jesus is Lord, we believe in our hearts that, that God raised him from the dead, we're saved. We belong to the Good Shepherd. We belong to Jesus. We become, you might say, his possessions. We belong to him. And we're really able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. It's quite a, an interesting thing. We belong to him. I think of another passage of scripture in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, it says this, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whom you have from God? The Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God. You are not your own. When we come to the place where we confess that Jesus is Lord, we believe in our hearts that God, that Jesus died and and God raised him from the dead. Jesus becomes Lord. He becomes our great shepherd. And the Holy Spirit, sent by God, resides in us. And so we have the Holy Spirit in us when the Lord is our shepherd. And again, it says, you are not your own. And we're reminded when we say the Lord is my shepherd, we're saying, I belong to God. I'm his, I'm his child. I'm part of his, of his flock. I belong in this family with God. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says, you are not your own, you were bought with a price. Well, what was that price? Well, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I lay my life down for my sheep. And so Jesus is ultimately saying, I, I laid my life down for you. That's why you belong to me. You're one of my sheep. I, I laid my life down for you. And, and we're able to say, I belong. I belong to the Lord. Why? Because Jesus laid his life down for us. And as we take Jesus as our Lord, as we take Jesus as our Savior, we belong to him. Our life isn't just our own anymore. Our life belongs to him. So here's, here's uh, something to think about. It's easy to lay claim to anything. It's easy to say, you shouldn't eat a dozen donuts a day. 
it's easy to say if you eat a dozen donuts a day, you're going to clog your arteries and and uh, and you're going to put yourself at risk of all kinds of health issues. Maybe your cholesterol goes out out the window, your blood pressure goes up, uh, you gain weight, you become lethargic. You know whatever effect having too much of a good thing has, you can easily say you shouldn't do that. Not good for you. But then if you go out every day, even though you know it's not good for you, even though you, you tell people you shouldn't do it, and if you go out every day and you order a dozen donuts and throughout the day you eat a dozen donuts, then functionally you're not doing what you believe. Functionally, you may be living a different way than, than what you're actually saying is, is the right way to live. When you look at Matthew chapter 25, it's, it's, it's man, it, it, is, it is hard teaching in this, in this particular chapter. And, and we have this picture of Jesus separating the sheep from the goats. And, and the sheep, when they're separated, you know, they, they inherit the kingdom. They go to heaven. And the goats are separated from the sheep. And they go off to eternal fire. And what this chapter does is it distinguishes the difference between the sheep and the goats. And, and one of the big differences was what they did and did not do. Very interesting passage of scripture. And so it really does mean that when we say the Lord is my shepherd, that we we belong to him and we give him lordship over our lives. We serve him, we live for him, we follow him. We don't just um, give mental or verbal assent to it, but functionally we, we follow Jesus. And so that's how you be a sheep, you follow Jesus. Now, I shared that passage of scripture in, in Matthew chapter 25, not, not to shame or to judge anybody. But when I read that, it, it causes me to honestly assess my life and reflect on, on how I'm living and, and what I'm doing and, 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 and where I'm going with my life and, and how well um, how well I'm living out what I, what I profess to believe. I think it's important. But then there's this other, this other part that I think we need to gain some assurance and confidence from. And it's what the Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3. And I want to read that. Paul says, Not that I've already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal. So what Paul is saying is, I am not in any way saying that I have it all together. He's, he's not saying at all, I'm perfect. I never make mistakes, I never sin. He's not saying that at all. In fact, he's saying, not that I've already obtained all this, or have already taken, uh, arrived at my goal. He then goes on to say, I press on toward to take hold of that for which Jesus Christ took hold of me. He says, so I'm, I'm pressing on, I'm striving, I'm, I'm moving forward. I haven't arrived, but I'm moving forward. And he says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but I love what he says next, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, all my past, all my sin, all my failures, all my disappointments, forgetting that, and straining toward what's ahead. Straining toward what's ahead. Jesus made provision for our sin. He made provision for our imperfection. And he made provision for our failures. And I don't know about you, but um, 
I'm sure not perfect. And I don't know that a day goes by that I could, I could say, oh, yeah, that was a perfect day. Jim, Jim just lived the perfect life, and Jim never had a bad thought, and, 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 and uh, Jim just was just like Jesus all day. He was absolutely perfect 24 hours a day. No, that, that's not me. And I take a great deal of comfort in a passage of Scripture like 1 John 1.8 where it says that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And so if, if you find yourself sitting with somebody and they're like, you know what, I'm perfect. I am a perfect Christian and I never do anything wrong and I'm never tempted. You know what? Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Because the Bible says that we're actually deceiving ourselves. If we think that, we're actually deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But then it goes on to give these incredible words of assurance. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. The Lord is my shepherd. And I am not a perfect sheep. And I wander. And I do things wrong. But I belong to him. And when I sin, I can ask to be forgiven. And he will forgive me. Isn't that a wonderful truth? Isn't that good to know? Well, it, it, it kind of brings me to... Uh, my next point, and that is that he is my shepherd. Now, some people are, are cat people, and some people are dog people. I guess some people are bird people, and some are fish people, and whatever. I, I grew up in a dog people family. We always had dogs. From, from as far back as I remember, we had dogs. And uh, my dad didn't always keep dogs very long. Uh, as, as I've grown into an adult, I like to keep a dog for its entire life, and uh, I don't trade them off on other dogs. They become part of our family. But it wasn't always, wasn't always like that for us growing up. I, I remember I had a, a beautiful uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever when I was about 10 years old. Her name was Ginger, and she was the most compliant, gentle, sweet dog that you could ever want. And uh, about a year later, we had another Chesapeake, and Ginger was no longer part of our family. And this one's name was Buster. And Buster was, I guess, the best way you could say it. He was just pig-headed. He was an alpha male. He, he was smart as a whip, but didn't listen real well. And really only listened to my dad, even though he was technically supposed to be my dog. He didn't listen to me really well. If, you know, if I was out walking him and he saw another dog, he, he, you know, he, he would get into a fight. I mean, he was just a, a really a tough, hard-headed dog. And then I think of another dog. When, when our kids were getting a little older, we, we got another dog named Himbuster as well, but he was a golden retriever across the Sheltie Coley. And I, 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 I would swear that he would wake up in the morning and think, how can I make everybody in my world happy today? I just want to please everybody. He was a real people-pleasing dog. Fortunately, he passed away. And then we got this other dog, little white Bichon. And man alive, what a cute little dog. But devious as all get out. If you turned your back, that, that little rascal was, was up to something bad. And a few years later, we, we, uh, he had some really bad habits that we just couldn't break and ended up with another dog, uh, a, a Bichon, no, it wasn't a Bichon, it was a Lhasa Shih Tzu cross, a little Bailey. We had her for 15 or 16 years. And Bailey had, um, uh, she had some really weird things about her. She, she was paranoid. She, she was a nervous wreck just afraid of her own shadow. 
and hated to be cuddled. Like, so imagine this antisocial, nervous, cute as a button little dog that really doesn't want to be touched. And that was Bailey. So I say all that to say that here's, you know, these, these half a dozen or so animals who were all extremely different than each other. They all had their unique personality and their unique ways of behaving and, and their particular leanings. And when I think of, of being a sheep in, 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 the Lord, in the Lord's flock and what he has to deal with with us and what a shepherd would deal with um, having a hundred or so sheep, he would have some that would just cling close and, and, and they would always be near the shepherd. And then there'd be those that maybe would be more prone to wander off and, 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 and those that are so dumb, they just walk off of a cliff or something like that. So there'd be all these different personalities. And that's how it is for us too. We're all a little bit different. And, and you know, some people, they, they come to know the Lord and they're just all in. It's all about God and I'm going to live for God and I'm going to serve God. And then there's others that they really want to, but maybe they're, they're dealing with past issues. It could be addictions or old habits or, or, or wounds from the past. And, 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 and then there's going to be those that are, you know, really strong-willed and they're, they, they, they believe, but, but, you know, they kind of wander a little bit. And in all of these people, God has a way of just bringing us together and managing us with all of our differences and all of the different ways that, that we as his sheep behave. But I like, I like what David says. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And David, David wandered. David made some terrible mistakes. David did some pretty horrible things in his life. But he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say, the Lord is the shepherd of the world. He didn't say, the Lord is the shepherd of a large crowd. The Lord is the shepherd of somebody else. He said, no, the Lord is my shepherd, my shepherd. I belong to him. In spite of my imperfections, in spite of my past, in spite of my failings, the Lord is my shepherd. And he wants to be your shepherd too. He loves you. He loves you that much. And so as I, as I kind of close off today, I want to ask you a question. The question is this. Who are you? How, how do you identify yourself? Do you, do you say, well, I'm the product of a broken home. I'm a victim of abuse. I'm divorced. I've, I've failed at business. I've gone bankrupt. I'm sick. I'm a widow. I'm a widower. I've lost a child. You see, there are so many things, so many experiences that, that people go through beyond description. And we can begin to identify as being that. Now, there's no doubt that our, our past can have an incredible effect on, on our current situation. But our past can also become a prison. And our past can also become the thing that we identify with that dictates our future. So we go back to Psalm 23.1. And David isn't making this claim of, I am the conqueror of other kingdoms. He doesn't say, I'm the guy that took out Goliath. He doesn't say, I'm the adulterer that, that took another man's wife and had her husband killed. He says, no. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And he was well aware of his own faults and failings and his own imperfections. And still he was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. And so let that be your identity, that I belong to the Lord and the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm, I'm his, I'm his. I want to encourage you to see yourself as God sees you, as one who is deeply loved, and deeply valued 
and forgive him whenever you ask. You forgive him. You protect it as being part of his flock, one of his sheep. A shepherd provides for, watches out for, protects, and sometimes this is a hard thing, sometimes disciplines. Sometimes disciplines. I, I, I understand in my reading that sometimes a shepherd, uh, if he had a, a sheep that had a tendency to wander off, would gently break its leg so that it couldn't do that. I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but, but that would be a form of loving discipline. Why? To save that sheep, to protect it, to keep it close to himself. And sometimes we, we come under the Lord's chastisement and discipline, but it's because he loves us. And he doesn't want to lose us. And he doesn't want us wandering off. He wants to keep us in relationship. The Lord is my shepherd. Let him be your shepherd as well. You can certainly have the assurance of that, of that relationship, Jesus said, in so many ways that he loves us, that he gave his life for us. And as we confess that Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart that he died and he rose again for our sins, we can have the assurance of salvation. And one of the things that um, I want to have you do is we're going to take communion now and we're going to celebrate the body and the blood of Jesus that was broken for us and the blood was shed for us and we are forgiven and our sins are cleansed because of what Jesus did for you and for me on the cross of Calvary. And so if you want to pause and go get uh, some bread and some juice, that would be great. If you're ready to go, we're going we're gonna to partake together right now. And so we are actually instructed in Scripture to remember and to celebrate the Lord's death and his resurrection until he comes. And so that's what we do. And uh, I would just like us to pause in a word of prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you and I thank you for your son Jesus who you sent to die for our sins. The forgiveness that we have experienced through the death, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And we thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. And Lord, bless these emblems now as we partake in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. After supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. Thank you for joining with us and for being part of this service. This is a very important part of the, the life and the ministry of Christian Life Church. And we welcome an audience from uh, all over Canada, uh, different places in the States, and, uh, and even different countries. Uh, people will, will come in and, and be part of our service, and, and we value you, and we thank you for joining us, and we count it a privilege to be able to be part of your lives and uh, to be able to minister to you. And I really hope that, that you are encouraged today. I really hope that you, you feel built, built up in your faith. And we would love to hear from you. If you want to drop us um, an email, uh, you can contact us through our website, uh, www.clcwinnipeg.ca, and 
And uh, if you're in Winnipeg, if you're out from out of town, stop in and see us. Our services are 9.30 and 11.10 each Sunday. We'd love to have you. And we also uh, are completely reliant on our congregation, which is a smaller church, and our online audience. If you'd like to give, if you'd like to, to help us out so that we can keep coming to you and, and providing the staff to uh, put together a weekly program, you can also give through our website, and, and we just want to thank you. It, it's receiptable. Charitable receipts are issued at the end of the year. Well, thank you for joining us. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday, God willing. If you enjoyed our service today and think that other people would as well, a great way for you to help others to see it is to like it, to comment on it, and to share it. That helps more people to see it, and sharing our service might be the easiest way that there's ever been to invite your friends to church. That's it for today. Have a great week, and we will see you back here next Sunday.